It has been... It has been 900... Hi. I have some news for y'all. You wanna see it? It has been 901 days since the last major Team Fortress 2 update, and to be completely honest, it seems as if Valve's priorities have been shifting. That said, I have been in the background doing all of the research I possibly can on what will be next for the game Team Fortress 2 that all of you have been clamoring for new information about. This is all of the information I have on the net. <laughs> Time? Is it really that? Time again. I suppose you must deal with this unpleasant omission. I'm afraid I cannot allow you to uh, distract our employers. Mm -hmm. They seem to be focused on an important, unrelated mission. I'm sure you understand. For now, though, I have been made aware of an interesting offer. In the meantime, I would prepare to carry the weight of assignments, materials, and, well, let's just say your skills are of utmost importance. I understand that this may not be the most opportune time, but I've been assured it will all become clear in due time. I am sure this will be a desired opportunity. So prepare, mercenaries. Prepare to operate in some hazardous environments. Hazardous Environments, a Team Fortress 2 and Half-Life collaborative event that us at Creators.tf have been working on for, oh my god, for quite a fucking while. How is everybody doing today? It's Tyler from Valve News Network. Hi, 
How you doing? It's me. I hope you're good, because I am very excited to have this finally be out there. Hazardous Environments, the Team Fortress 2 event. Um, I'd love to show it to you, but it looks as if our website is down. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Anyways, uh, I'll pull up the dev website. Um, hold on. So, how's everybody doing today? It's Tyler from Valve News Network. I hope you're having a good day. I really do. We've been working on this non-stop for a long time. The website is completely down. It looks as if people are very excited for this, which is awesome. You know, I'm very glad that people are looking forward to this. Uh, this is a four-day Team Fortress 2 Half-Life Cross event. Um, and we have new maps, new weapons, new co cosmetics, just a whole bunch of new shit coming to Team Fortress 2. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Mike is in stereo. And, um, yeah, I, I hope everybody has a good time playing it. This is day one of a four-day event. I hope you guys uh, look forward to the next few days of this event. Uh, all of the content actually ships on day four, like a normal Team Fortress 2 uh, update. And since we know that uh, Team Fortress 2 is not something that Valve is very concerned about right now, I think the... The big lag bot problem is definitely something that, you know, can attest to something like that. Uh, it's cool to be able to see something like a big community event come out and and really show off what the community can do in, in, the, in, a, in an environment of very little help from Valve. So, let's go over the day one website. Team Fortress 2 Half-Life event created by team the, the uh, creators.tf team. Remember, creators.tf was the thing that we put together last year, was my dream, and it finally came to fruition, and, and our first really, really, really cool update is here. Welcome to Hazardous Environments, we just watched that video. The Combine Invasion has begun. Shortly to date, an unsuccessful experiment involving teleportation technologies has led to a massive explosion. The collapse brought the attention of the intergalactic forces known as the Combine, which were inter interested in mastering teleportation for their own purposes. You are here to step into hazardous environments and stop the Combine attack. We have three community maps added into our uh, creators.tf server rotation, first one being Slaughter, uh, created by Void, Divadan, and Juniper. Uh, when it comes, when you think about Half-Life, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Blood, fight, gunfights, puzzles, scientist screams? Well, in our mind, it comes with the level design. Take a look at three community maps that have been chosen, tested, and thought it would fit the theme of this event. Um, we did test, oh God, I'd probably say about 100 maps over time, over the last two months. Uh, this event is, dev we've been working on it since before the uh, Christmas event had ended. We have been working on this event for, for quite a long time. The idea for a Half-Life event was mine. Uh, we just kind of pushed it forward and, and, and it's come out. Um, we got Spillway by Saba, USG, Urban, E. Arkham, and Pont. And then of course we have Glassworks by UEAK, Crash, and Frasia. Um, report the fort! Report the fort! New cosmetics, hats, and headcrabs. Be a scientist, a combine, or be eaten by a headcrab. We're introducing a new set of community-made cosmetics themed around this event. Half-Life, the game. Do you want to be a famous scientist? Go for it. Do you want to be a part of civil protection? Go for it. Want to be eaten by a, a head crab? Sure, nothing's stopping to you. We've got the, the unlicensed physicist set. Check this shit out. Look at that. We have this. It's made by Neo Demet, Harry, and Nuts. We've got the Mountain Lab Accident. Cosmetic set for, for the medic. Look at this. Look at that. Cosmetic set by Get Grenade and Greg. We have a cosmetic for the engineer, the Bread Crab, made by Fruit and Doggo. And then we have the Benefactor's Bowl. Look at that. It's a cosmetic for the Pyro, made by Doggo. Um, and then we have a whole, uh, we have a really nice wallpaper for you to celebrate the event. Um, I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. Take a look at this. The Bread Crab is an all class cosmetic. Jota is spamming my chat to let me know. The bread crap says, Engineer, we need to get that fixed. It's an all-class. New update hype. 
Wait to leak your IP address by the way. Okay. Um, anyways, we are looking at here. We have, um, you know, all the people that worked on it. Moonly, 404, Dr. Days. I'm on there. Look at that. I made it. But I hope you guys um, are having a good time. I hope you guys are having a real, real good time. Uh, but yeah. So, report the fort. A new Team Fortress 2 community made update with nothing with Valve. Um, no Valve uh, inter interaction, no Valve interference, no Valve anything. Valve had nothing to do with this, and we were still able um, to put something like this out. I'm very happy uh, that we were able to get something like this out. And, uh, yeah. I hope you guys are, um, I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you guys are doing well. I, uh, I'm doing well. I'm gonna take some questions about this update. I'm gonna take some questions about things that have been going on. As you can see, this, uh, this, this, uh, this is called, um, what do we have this called? What did I call this, this live stream? I think it was like caffeine crowbars and, and TF2? Yeah. So I'm trying to get off a of caffeine addiction. When I was, uh, in the midst of working on everything related to, um, you know, Half-Life Alex when it the first came out. The thing showed your IP, you literally showed it again. <laughs> Whoops. Guess I'm gonna have to call my ISP. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. So, what? in the middle of all this Half-Life Alex stuff, I was working fucking non-stop. I was drinking like four or five energy drinks a day. Uh, taking some caffeine supplements on top of that so that I can get stuff out um, in time. And uh, I'm cutting it cold turkey. I've been off of caffeine for a couple of days now and it's rough. Oh my god. I have been it sleeping non-stop. Like I have been sleeping non-goddamn stop. And uh, yeah, I mean it's cool and you know but I, I mean I, I'm glad that I'm getting off of it but yeah I need to get off of it so I'm like really tired all the time uh, but it's okay I'm trying to get as much work done as I possibly can um, you know and I have cut out I don't really drink alcohol but I'll drink White Claw when I'm playing like board games with Tyler and Electra like you know I think it's fun when we're eat we're eating pizza and we're playing board games and drinking, you know, White Claw. That can be fun, but I just, I, I, I just feel uncomfortable doing that now. So I'll, I completely cut that out as well. I don't know if you can tell, but my T-shirts don't fit no more, so it's kind of fun. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going out and jogging a couple of miles a day. I'm up to two miles now, um, and then I'll walk another two miles. Um, and yeah, so. And I'm working really hard to um, work on myself, my health, my physical being, my mental being, and all that. Because, you know, there are periods of time where the job is really, really important. And the Half-Life Alex stuff was obviously the most important period of my career. Um, and I think I did a really good job. I was doing two-a-days for a while. And, um, yeah, I'm just really happy with how things are. I'm really happy with how things are going. Um, I'm lucky that I'm healthy enough, you know, I'm lucky that I have a job that, um, I can work from home. Uh, I know a lot of people are struggling out there in this, in this really crazy time. And I just want to, um, you know, put, put my, my debt of gratitude out to everybody that allows me to continuously have this kind of a job in, uh, you know, situation that, that we're all in. And, uh, I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's washing your hands. I hope everybody's staying home, um, you know, so thank you very much. I hope you guys are good. Um, another thing I've been working on is the crowbar. Uh, I'll, sh I'll quickly show you that video because, I mean, I uploaded it yesterday. I showed everybody that video yesterday, but I can show it off again today. Uh, here's a preview of the next Half-Life Alex cut content video, and I will give full context as to what you're seeing here now. Look at that.
Okay, so... This was really, really hard to get working. Um, I, myself, and uh, a couple other people like Valkyrie have been working on trying to get this to work for a very long time. And the problem we kept running into was the fact that whenever we spawned the usable entity crowbar in the game, we couldn't pick it up. Um, and we thought that was a major bug. We didn't know exactly why when you spawned a usable, you know, actual crowbar, why you can't pick the damn thing up. Well, as it turns out, it was never meant to be picked up. Even when it worked, it wasn't something that you would find out in the world and you had to pick up off the ground. It's an inventory item. And it's an old iteration of an inventory item. This is really weird. But essentially, the crowbar was cut at a point in development where weapons worked a bit differently. It was cut uh, early last year, probably a year ago. A lot of work went into uh, making the crowbar work the way it did and the way it should have. And all that work still exists within the code. And the entities related to the crowbar still exist. I don't know why. A lot of people, spoilers, thought that because you're handed a crowbar at some point in the game, that must be the crowbar. So just trying to get that to work must be how you get the crowbar. That's not the case. That's a prop you're being handed with a trigger attached to on grip. That's not how that works. The actual weapon crowbar is an inventory item just like the multi-tool. And just like the multi-tool, you're not given it, you just have it. There were a couple points in development where like Barney would hand you the crowbar or Joseph, the early version of Rus the Russell would hand you the crowbar. But there were many iterations of development where you just had it in your inventory. And in fact, um, there were points in time in development where you had the crowbar and not the multi-tool, but for a very long period of time, you had both the crowbar and the multi-tool. And in fact, you had a radio. You had a walkie-talkie. That walkie-talkie was the early way of communicating with Joseph, whom was always somebody you were talking to, but never to the extent that you were talking to them in the game. It was once in a while, you'd pull out the walkie-talkie, and you'd actually have to speak into it. That's, you know whole other thing. Anyways, so when you give yourself a crowbar using the console, here's a secret. It's actually giving you a crowbar. But what's actually going on there is back when the crowbar was a thing, you know in VR where you push down on the trackpad or you go to your weapon selection screen and you have the four items. Originally, there were six or even seven items at one point. What's going on is the game doesn't actually have the UI models to spawn in front of you. And even if you give it the UI models, Valve didn't remove it, the crowbar selection from your weapon selection. They just put it so far away from your being that you can't reach it. Honest to God, if you put the files that it's looking for and give yourself a crowbar and try and switch to it, literally a million units away is the thing that you need to touch to bring the crowbar up. So what, what happened here is somebody actually approached me on Twitter and said, okay, I figured something out. In Half-Life Alex, the, um, what is it called? The, uh, the, the priority that the different utility weapons and weapons have are in a specific order. And in fact, weapons and utility items are two different things. The pistol, the SMG, and the shotgun are weapons. And they're in a separate category because they're far more interactable than the utility items. At any point in development, there have ever only been three utility items. The multi-tool, the crowbar, and the walkie-talkie radio thing. So what this guy did was decompile it, reverse engineer something, and then recompile the DLLs to switch the crowbar and the multi-tool so that the, the crowbar is more important than the multi-tool because all the game is doing is giving you your inventory items when you get the multi-tool. It's not giving you a multi-tool, it's giving you your inventory items. So if you just switch those two around and feed the game the models, instead of it giving you the, the, the multi-tool, it gives you the crowbar in your utility slot. Now, obviously, that isn't playable. 
because the only point in the game where it will naturally give you the crowbar without crashing is the first time you're supposed to use your multi-tool. And when they give you your multi-tool, you need to use it. So if instead they give you a crowbar, you're behind a locked door. And without the multi-tool, you can't unlock that door. Because what, what happens is if you load into a map, that map is expected to give you the multi-tool. And if it gives you something else, it crashes. If you load a previous save that's expecting the multi-tool, it crashes. But if you go into the level that's supposed to give you the multi-tool and it spawns your inventory items and it gives you the crowbar, it's fine. You just have to go into developer mode, use developer teleport, which is essentially like VR noclip, and try and play the game that way. But it's still broken. You can't upgrade your weapons because you don't have a multi-tool. And the weapon, the crowbar model that we're feeding the game, if you, in case you saw in the video, the crowbar model is upside down. The hook is facing you. It's not facing downward the way it should be. That's because the model that it's expecting is not the model that's in the game. Excuse me. The final shipped crowbar model, the model that you're handed at the end of Half-Life Alex, is a different model than what they were using when the crowbar was a usable weapon. Thank you. You're welcome. So it's actually flipped on its axis for some reason. And the animations are a little bugged because you're grabbing the wrong part of it. It's expecting it to be in a certain orientation, but it's not in that orientation because it's a completely different model that was developed for an entirely different purpose. It's, it's very possible that the model they were using is just the full world model of Half-Life 2. We're still running tests. We'll be able to figure that out if that's the case. If it's literally the world model for the crowbar in Half-Life 2, then that's an easy fix. You just port that in, you change the names, and it should work. The problem is, and we discovered this not through any kind of code hunting, but just through implementation alone, because we were able to get the game to feed us the wrong thing, because we were able to get the game to feed us an early thing with that still works within the main code, thank you, it has its early implementation quirks. And with that comes this, this thing that I had no idea about. When you have the crowbar in your dominant hand, your flashlight and your health is all on this hand. That's how it works in retail. But the crowbar is from the point in time that the gravity gloves were early and you had a watch. What happens is you can actually very easily switch the hand that your weapon is in, but only with the crowbar because it's developed to do that for some reason. So if you have an open hand and you accidentally get close and grab, that crowbar is gonna switch over to that other hand. And then all of the UI goes onto your other hand in a broken way because it's not developed to go over there. So all of the health stuff in the flashlight quickly switch over here and it's overlapping on the other gravity glove because it's not designed to do that anymore. The problem is that's fine and it works, but if you have the weapon in your non-dominant hand and you try and open up your weapon switch inventory, the game immediately crashes because it's not designed to do that. When you go to your weapon inventory, it looks for the model in your dominant hand to take it away. When it finds no weapon in the dominant hand, yet still see the flag that there is a weapon out, it doesn't know what to do because every other utility item was developed further to not allow that. But it's a regression or it's an old version of the code that allows you to switch hands. And unless we can take a look at the code directly, we can't just remove that feature. So there's a couple problems in front of us in order to make the crowbar fully working because the interesting thing is um, it works. Once you have it in your hand and you don't fuck with it too much, like you don't try and switch hands, you don't load into another level that's expecting it, when you're in a situation where the game's engine isn't going to crash, it works. You can hit things, you can damage entities. I've, I've spawned, you know, enemies in it. It fully works. You can damage it on the other end. You can damage it on the hook end. You can hook onto physics props and drag them. It works exactly as you would expect it to. But the only way we can get it fully playable is A, we remove the ability to switch from hand to hand, or we somehow make it work for every weapon so the game doesn't freak out every time you try and switch the weapons, and B, implement 
the old weapon selection screen. So the weapon selection screen in retail Half-Life Alex is four items. The pistol, the SMG, the shotgun, and your multi-tool. That's fine. You know, that's 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 all well and good. The problem is um, when you run into uh, the fact that you need to spawn more than those four items, right? So you have um, the original models. Uh, let me pull up the picture. I have a picture. This is in retail. This isn't in any earlier builds or any of that bullshit. In retail, there is... One yeah, year. One year. Thank you very much. In retail, there's this image. Let me just drag it into the thing. This image is of the original weapon selection screen model HUD. So the way that that HUD works is it's not actually any kind of UI. We're working with pamer Panorama, so we can actually spawn weapons in different areas very, very easily. Um, so what ends up happening is you push the button, it spawns uh, models all around you. And as you can see in this original version, you have a, a spot for your crowbar, a spot for your early multi-tool, and then three pistols, because they were changing the, uh, the weapon set around when this was being used in development. You had the eye rifle, you had a different shotgun at one point, things like that. Placeholders. Um, so, and then you had your glove, which would just switch to your hands. Um, if we could get this to work, if we could feed the game six models instead of the four, it's possible it will work right out of the box. The problem is the only model we actually have is this one. This is a demonstration model, and we need to isolate each individual orb as separate entities in order for it to work. Otherwise, it'll just be a static thing in front of you that won't do anything, right? It's complicated. Uh, we're at the point now where I'm comfortable making a video about the crowbar and explaining some of these problems so that in the future, if somebody's able to solve them, I could make a follow-up or um, what I'm going to be calling the unofficial community Half-Life Alex patch or something along those lines. That'll reintroduce the crowbar, it'll add a jump button, it'll add a flashlight button, things like that. Um, you know, just stuff like that, fun stuff like that. So there, all of that is... Um, is being worked on right now. That's my big project. That's the next Half-Life Alex video is the crowbar. Um, I teased it in the last HLACC video. Um, and a lot of people have been asking me, you know, oh, well that video that you show off the crowbar, that's your early build that you can't share. And the fun thing about that is no, that video is retail. That video is version 1.2 that you download from Steam today. So, if I were to give you the modified DLLs, you could do it too. But it's really, really broken. It's... I had to re-record that bit like eight times for it to even be presentable. And the reason I cut the video off so quickly is because the game crashed. So, you know, I could share it, but it won't be fun. It's not gonna be the thing that you want it to be. It's not gonna be, oh, extra inventory slot, oh, it's crowbar, oh, it works. That's what I'd love to be able to share. We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. We'll see what ends up uh, going on with all of that. I'm very happy for all of the help that I've been getting uh, on this front because this has been really, really hard. And I'm sure that it's going to continuously get harder um, because like there's so much stuff that I need to research over time on Source 2 and the Half-Life Alex engine and all the cut content and a lot of people have, have, have contacted me and said stuff like, well, I mean, like, you know, cut content's fun, but there's a game out. And I thought about that, and yeah, I'm going to be making non-cut content videos, but at the same time, I feel like it's, uh, I feel like this is what I'm good at, and I feel like it's what I can give back to the community. Five you months. Know, five months. Um, another thing, if you try and spawn the crowbar in the beta build, nothing works whatsoever. It doesn't work. A lot of people are like, oh, you probably have the, the things that could help fix it in the beta build. I don't. Surprisingly, it's way easier to work with the retail build on this front than the beta build. I don't know why. It's just how it is. So that's where we're at. Um, yeah, and if we hit our goal, I'll talk about the vi the two <laughs> videos that are going to take place after HLVR that. underscore continuous underscore normal underscore speed 200 HLVR underscore continuous underscore combat underscore speed 200. Also Miku Miku. Wait, 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 wait. There's a, there's a command that lets you change your continuous speed? What? 
I had no idea. Are you kidding me? Because Alex walks way too fucking slow in that game. All right, let's talk about Team Fortress 2. This is the TF2. Um, let's talk about the TF2 stuff. Oh, Valkyrie, you might be right. I'll look. Um, yeah, but Half-Life Alex is super duper, super duper fun. Uh, let's watch that SFM one more time because I'm really proud of it. <laughs> it was expensive. <laughs> I funded that. So the fun thing about that is um, Moonly sent me a draft of that script that we would use for the G-Man. And I was like, eh. And I touched it up and I did a hell of a lot with it. And then I contacted Japanese Bush Baby and I was like, hey, can we do this? And he's like, yeah, it's going to cost. And I paid him. And I paid him for something else. And then we we went and got somebody to... Yeah. Really, 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 really happy about it. Ah, oh, man. Does the HLA Breen model have facial animations? No. It's super unfinished. We'll watch this one more time because I'm so happy with it. The idea... So yes. I didn't have the idea... LMAO, that command has been literally everywhere the last few days. I guess you had crowbars on the brain and didn't notice. I've been focused on crowbars, and also I took a two-day break where I didn't look at anything. So, yeah, um, the idea of the G-Man corrupting my YouTube channel came, like, days ago, and we threw it together at the last minute. <laughs> it has been 901 days since- And also, I knew from day one that I was going to clickbait everybody with, oh, update news, and I knew that would piss some people off, but fuck it, this is fun. Fuck it, this is fun. It has been 901 days since the last major Team Fortress 2 update, and to be completely honest, it seems as if Valve's priorities have been shifting. That said, I have been in the background doing all of the research I possibly can on what will be next for the game Team Fortress 2 that all of you have been clamoring for new information about. This is all of the information I have on the net. <laughs> First time I saw this, because we got somebody else to do this animation. First time I saw the animation, I was fucking blown away. My favorite part is when the G-Man closes in his hands. I don't remember who did the animation. You're gonna have to ask the creators.tf people. Dying? Is it really that time again? I suppose you must deal with this unpleasant omission. This part's my favorite. That is so fucking cool. I'm afraid I cannot allow you to distract our employers. Mm -hmm. They seem to be focused on an important, unrelated mission. I'm sure you understand. For now, though, I have been made aware of an interesting offer. In the meantime, I would prepare to carry the weight of assignments, materials, and, well, let's just say your skills are of utmost importance. I understand that this may not be the most opportune time, but I've been assured it will all be clear in due time. I am sure this will be a desired opportunity. So prepare, mercenaries. Prepare to operate in some hazardous environments.
Isn't that fucking cool? <laughs> Isn't that so fucking cool? I'm so happy. About. I'm so happy. Thanks for all your hard work. Can't wait for workshop support in Alex. Yeah, yes. Me too. Continuous speed on Steam launch options are fantastic. Keep up the enthusiasm it has been... and great journalism. Three Thanks. Months. Thank you. The animator Coyote remade the heart to heart G Man speech with HLA assets. You should watch it on stream. Okay. I actually saw this was uploaded and I haven't seen it yet. I wanted to watch this. Dark you know I'm free. always critical of you, but Butterfly, indeed, this is so fun. It's worth the clickbait. People are always fucking critical of me. It doesn't matter. Dr. Freeman. I realize this moment may not be the most convenient for a heart to heart. But I had to wait until your friends were otherwise occupied. There was a time they cared nothing for Miss Vance, when their only experience of humanity was a crowbar coming at them down a steel corridor. When I plucked her from Black Mesa, I acted in the face of objections that she was a mere child and of no practical use to anyone. I have learned to ignore such naysayers when quelling them was out of the question. Still, I am not one to squander my investments. And I remain confident she was worth far more than the initial appraisal. That's why I must now extract from you some small repayment owed for your own survival. See her safely to White Forest, Dr. Freeman. I wish I could do more than keep an eye on you. But I have agreed to abide by certain restrictions. Well, now, listen carefully, my dear. When you see your father, relay these words. Prepare for unforeseen consequences. Hell yeah! That was awesome! That was fucking cool! Awesome, dude. Hell yeah. <sighs> Alright. Q&A time. Let's take some questions. Give you some answers. I need to go on my walk before it gets dark. So we'll cut this short probably. Do I have a PO box? Yes. Exclamation point PO in the chat. Will SDK be uh, this month or end of year? I don't have no idea when the SDK will launch. Uh, yep. Did you see the uh, VG247 article about Boneworks? I did. All right, let's talk about that. Can I see your passport? So VG247 wrote an article about how Va a quote from Valve saying that the Boneworks thing is weird and they took more inspiration from um, uh, budget cuts than Boneworks. And they opened that article with, In December of last year, Valve News Network released a video claiming that the VR title Boneworks had heavily inspired the direction of Half-Life Alex. Citing insider sources, the video talks about how it impacted Valve's locomotion options and essentially showed Valve up with what was possible in VR. Here's the video. God fucking damn it. I'm not even gonna let it bother me because like I, 
I know what I heard and I know what I talked to, who I talked to. So uh, yeah, fuck you. I'm gonna keep doing my job. I think uh, I think I think everything that's happened over the last couple months have proven uh, that I'm I I am good at at this. This job is what I am good at. <laughs> And it's hilarious. I mean, it's way too obvious that you weren't right, lol. Okay, I mean, I have a build of Half-Life Alex from right before Boneworks was shown off to them in any full capacity. And then we have the build right after with smooth locomotion, so... I mean, I will get the SLZ people one day to, to talk to me about all that stuff. How do you feel about Robin saying physical hands were in since the beginning? That's not... Okay, that's not entirely true. That's not how that works. Physical hand... I'm not going down that path. You're not baiting me down that path. <laughs> okay. Um... Why did they remove the pancake mode command? Because they never meant to put it in. Any big news about the data mine? Oh, there's lots. Thoughts on HL no VR? Um, it, I mean, I knew that kind of stuff. I think it's hilarious that my videos never get featured on r slash games, but then any hit piece does. <laughs> Love it! It's really hot down here. Why the fuck is it so hot down here? Uh, you have a build from before Boneworks was shown? Yeah. Do you drink water? Yeah. Where'd you get that shirt? I've had this shirt. I think it's my dad's yes. shirt. Can I just say great work from Electra on the Dotaverse content so far? Moon Day updates seem to be a thing also. That's not Electra. That's- that's anger. Oh, you meant to say anger? Okay, good. Yeah, anger's really happy with the- with those videos. I mean, the like-dislike ratios on those can get a bit mean, because it's not me. Who fucking cares? I think it's funny that everybody- like, the dislike ratio on this TF2 video is like, ugh. I do kind of want to filter it out the really been... hardcore TF2 fans on my channel because they're kind of awful lately. <laughs> like, oh god, you guys, what the fuck? <laughs> oh man! I can tell exactly when the cheaters, the, the cheat people or whatever, start really, like, putting their nails into the, the, the casual servers because I'll get no emails and then a THOUSAND emails! Tyler, it's your job to talk about this lagbot issue! No, it's not. <laughs> that is not my job. What will happen? I talk about it, bring more attention to it, and then it gets worse? The best thing to do in that kind of situation is to ignore it. Valve will fix it. Contact Valve. I'm not Valve. <laughs> oh, man. I meant to say it's way too obvious that you were right about Boneworks being an inspiration, especially with the gameplay trailer cancellation of TGA. Yeah, because I have a build from that period of time! <laughs> the game was awful at that point! Oh, whatever. No, it's like, I don't even care anymore because it used to be like, oh, what if I'm wrong? Like with the HLVR stuff, before it was like fully, fully confirmed, part of me was like, uh... What if they cancel it and it makes me look like an asshole? But now it's out. Now everybody knows I'm good, I'm good at what I do. So now it's like, okay, you're gonna try and shit on me? Come on, come on. You, and I remember, I always think back to what my grandfather used to tell me, which is like, you know, if, if there aren't people saying bad things about you out there, 
you're not doing something right. Like if there's if there the best thing for a creator is to have a mixture of opinions out in the wild, you know. If all you're hearing is good stuff about your things, then you're not growing and reaching a larger audience and it's just a hug circle. But if you're only hearing bad stuff, then yeah, you need to improve. If you're hearing an, an enormous mix of things, then you're doing your job right, kiddo. You know? We ever talk about the anti-science beta video from HLA? Yes, and I will talk about the other four. <laughs> That's a video. That's one of those videos. My grandfather's been dead since 2007. I miss him so fucking much. Apparently the article doesn't invalidate your claim. Sure, but it starts the fucking art. Fucking, ah. <sighs> All right. Why you keep calling it awful? Okay, so interesting thing about the the beta build. I'm currently working on um, footage, like like usable footage for the future, for when I start doing videos on the beta build, and I'm editing together like a full recorded playthrough of everything, right? problem is um, when I do that I'll turn my headset down to 80 Hertz when I do that I will try and limit any other this game is so unoptimized oh my god it makes me so sick to play I have VR legs of steel and I can't play this beta build for more than 30 minutes at a time I tried porting the maps into the retail build so I could use current mode like locomotion methods nope doesn't work but this makes me so fucking sick to play. It makes me so fucking sick. And it's hilarious because, like, this isn't that old of, like, of a build. It's only from last fucking September or October. And it's like, wow, they got shit together quick because, damn, a lot of this stuff doesn't work. It is not playable end to end. It is not fully playable end to end. It is not. There are many points in it so far where I have to turn on VR Developer uh, Teleporter because you can't move forward. Um, so. Woo! Thank you. Any Bethesda news? No, I've been busy. Why does Valve prefer to focus on Underlords over TF2? <sighs> okay, so... It's funny that, like, I've grown with Valve News Network. It's, 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 it's interesting to see how I've matured with Valve News Network. I remember a few years ago, I was the type of person to be like, okay, but what about TF2? Okay, but what about TF2? And now I realize the older I get that TF2 was fun. TF2 was a test bed. TF2 was an experiment ground for Valve. And TF2 is very, very old. And TF2, regardless of your opinion, is not bringing in the kind of revenue that you think it does. Why is Valve focusing on Underlords and Artifact right now? Because regardless of the number of people playing that game, there is way more to learn as a company in those spaces than in Team Fortress 2. Okay? Team Fortress 2 came out my grandfather was still alive. I was 10. I was a 10 year old boy when Team Fortress 2 came out. I am a 23 year old adult and my grandfather's been dead for 13 years. 13 years before Team Fortress 2, Doom had just come out. If you take that same period of time before Team Fortress 2, that's yes. 1994! <laughs> like, fucking duh!
1993. Look, look, there, what, just, just, it's not, it's not gonna happen, guys. It's not. I don't know in a way to tell you that doesn't cause you to fucking hate me, because I don't know what it is about the Team Fortress 2 community, but damn, you guys are fucking mean. Let me show you something. Actually, I can't show you. Can I not? No, I cannot. Fuck. Okay. Eric Smith worked on uh, Half-Life Alex for a long time. For at least the last two years. Three years ago, you leaked your YouTube income statistics page on stream and I said what it was in chat. Five seconds before you said you didn't want anyone saying what it was. I was 14 and stupid and I still feel bad about that. Sorry, love you and your content. Okay, it's all right. I bought I, a physical copy of TF2 you. for the Xbox 360 in a Sears. A Sears? So... Yeah, I mean, like, look, Team Fortress 2 may get an update one day. It's never going to go back to the glory days. It's not. You're never going to be getting consistent updates like Underlords is now. Even Dota 2 is dying right now. You know? Like, it's just not their priority. <laughs> and looking at the... Looking at the, the chat, it's like, yeah, that's exactly what I expect. It's been six months. Love your content. Keep it up, my man. Uh, so, you know, I've learned over time to not really pay attention to, to the bulk of the community because I'm going to make what I want to make. I'm going to think what I think. I'm not going to allow other people to influence my opinions. If you have legitimate facts about what's going on out with the Team Fortress 2 team, I will listen to those in a heartbeat. But I guarantee you, you don't other than, oh, Eric Smith was playing casual a few days ago. Definitely an update, not him trying to take a look at what's going on with these lag bots. I'm sorry, it's just, it's, it's what's going on, you know. Yeah, so I'm gonna go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, TF2. Tyler wants TF2 to die? Did I say that? <laughs> no, I don't want Team Fortress 2 to die. I love Team Fortress 2, but I'm realistic. I've been studying this company for a decade. So it's just like, you know, if you're mad that I used a little, I used clickbait in this announcement video, unsubscribe. I'm sorry that you're mad. If you're mad that I think Team Fortress 2 is not Valve's main priority, I don't know what to tell you, because it's not. And if you want to see Electra's new haircut... Oh, Electra needs me to put her eye drops in. Do you want to do it on stream? That'd be so much fun. No. No, okay. I'm gonna go, guys. Love you guys. Peace and hair grease. I hope you guys enjoy the, um, the, uh, creators.tf hazardous environments team fortress 2 half-life crossover event you're going to be getting a full video from me on everything related to it uh on day four i hope to see you there peace and hair grease love you guys bye